or to, do the, it to the cloud if you can. All right, so now we are recording. Welcome everybody to the Capitol Hill Day webinar to help you prepare for Capitol Hill Day. Um, we have what a hundred and sixty so people on right in. now. People are coming in, so we'll wait just a few minutes to get everybody time to get in. But thank you all for being here. Can you guys all see my slides or the at least the PowerPoint yep. right now? Yeah, okay. you just have to go back to the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. And now I can't see who's coming in. So let me know when you wanna uh, start. I'm admitting all, let me just give, give it like two more minutes because we got crowds coming in. Okay. Uh, yes, the slides will definitely be made available to everybody to answer your question. So. Yeah, this is uh, being recorded. It's going to be posted to uh, CADCA's YouTube channel and on CADCA's website as well. So there are several ways to see this. If you have to hop off early or you're, you arrive late, um, this will be here for you as a resource. And Chris, where will the slides be housed if people don't want to watch the video? Yeah, the 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 messages in the chat box it covers all of that. Great, thank you. And I'll redo it again so that when people join in five minutes, they can see it as well. maybe just like one more minute all right and then i'll just keep admitting people while you're going all right <laughs> okay we're at 200 all right, right i'll go ahead and start yeah uh, Welcome everybody to CADCA's Capitol Hill Day webinar, which will help you prepare for your Hill meetings uh, here in less than two weeks at the National Leadership Forum. Uh, this is being recorded. It'll be posted to the CADCA website, to YouTube. Um, it'll be there as a resource for you uh, moving forward. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to our consultant, Sue Thaw, to get started. Well, hello, everybody. We are so excited about this year's forum and Capitol Hill Day. Chris, can you please advance the slides? Um, so today I'm going to be joined by Chris Dorn, who you've already heard from, uh, Alex Mahoney, our senior public policy associate, Sean Moore, who's been amazingly helpful in setting up all of the virtual um, Hill meetings, we also have Angelique Wilkins, our amazing uh, vice president of meetings and conferences in case anyone has any general questions, and also um, two of her amazing um, staff people, Ralia and Kali. So we're all staffed for you and ready for any questions that, that you might have. Uh, next slide, please, Chris. So Capitol Hill Day is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. And I realized today it's 2-2. 2022. It's like really sort of amazing. And I, before I really get started, I want to explain something I think is really important that um, although this year's forum, thank goodness, is in person and we are so thrilled that everybody's coming, we just can't tell you how excited we are. Um, the reason that the Capitol Hill Day uh, meetings are virtual has nothing to do with CATCA. This really has to do with what's happening in our Capitol in Washington. Um, the combination of what happened last year on 1-6 on and the heightened security and the issues with letting people into the Capitol at this point, coupled with um, sort of the COVID-19 protocols uh, on Capitol Hill have made it that almost every single meeting anyone is having 
on Capitol Hill with members of Congress are virtual. In fact, my staff and I, who this is what we do for a living ourselves, have not had one in-person meeting on Capitol Hill um, really since the pandemic began, began but it's, um, it's, it's very hard to get into the Capitol now because of the heightened security after 1-6. I just want to make it very, very clear this was not a CADCA decision. This is how um, almost all the offices on Capitol Hill are doing their meetings with constituents across the board. Uh, and so next slide, please, Chris. So uh, Capitol Hill meetings, virtual or not, are incredibly, incredibly important to you, to us, and to our entire field, uh, because it's really the opportunity for every one of you to meet with the members of your congressional delegation and their key staff members, and, and really to educate them about who you are, what you do, and how you make a difference in the communities that you work in. Um, and these meetings have always been incredibly important in getting our field on the radar screen um, of officials on Capitol Hill. Uh, next slide, please. So this is really your opportunity to, um, to educate your two senators and your representative about who you are, who the sector members of your coalition are. And a lot of times they know some of the people personally who are part of the 12 sectors. The successes and outcomes that you've achieved, it's really important to share those with them. And most of you have fabulous data as well as um, great anecdotes to share about your successes, um, to educate them about the amazing role that your coalitions play in your community, and, and also to point out the federal programs that fund your work. It is not lobbying to tell people what funds your what programs fund what you do and allow you to actually do your work in um, in your communities. And we're really, really trying to get substance use, misuse prevention moved higher up on the national agenda. We've done a really good job, and you'll see in a minute when I go through some of our successes. But um, we really do need to do a better job for everybody to understand that to stop the pipeline to addiction and overdose, we really need to do more upstream to stop use before it ever starts. And that's what we do best and we know how to do it. And we need to share how important what we do is and that we've had really big successes and outcomes. Next slide, please. So can one meeting or one Zoom meeting uh, really make a difference? The answer is an emphatic yes. There should be a hundred exclamation points after this. Um, Capitol Hill days past have been the exact opportunities that have yielded the most champions for CADCA and for our field that we've ever had. In fact, there isn't one champion on the Hill that we have that wasn't really brought to us by people who attended Capitol Hill days and met their members and got them really interested in what they were doing locally and then got them interested in helping nationally to make sure that what you do is spread across the country and really at this point across the whole world. Uh, next slide, please. So why should everyone participate in Capitol Hill meetings? Hopefully everyone on the phone is signed up for these meetings already, but it really does show the power of our substance use prevention movement to have one afternoon where hundreds, if not thousands of people are um, talking to members of Congress at the same time. It's a way to be really heard on Capitol Hill, to build relationships with members of Congress and their staffs, to share your local outcomes and successes. And again, to get prevention higher up on the radar screen of Congress. I think we're on the radar screen. We just need to move ourselves a little bit higher up uh, on the radar screen. And that's something that you have always done with great aplomb during Capitol Hill days past. And again, last year's Capitol Hill day was virtual and it was amazing. And we got some unbelievable champions out of it and great feedback. So um, the fact that it's virtual, I think will not hamper your ability to achieve any of the goals that you have for this year's Capitol Hill day. Next slide, please. So why it's important to be on the policy radar screen. I think everybody knows we're competing not just within our continuum of care for the substance use arena, but with every major uh, program area and program of concern on Capitol Hill for, for attention. So not just with 
with drugs and alcohol and smoking, but all health related issues, justice related issues, international issues, you name it, they're hearing from people about it. So to get our sort of issues higher up on the radar screen, the more people they hear from, the more likely they are to, to care. So this is one of those things where the squeaky wheel gets the grease, the people who show up and speak up get more attention than those who don't. So this is a fabulous opportunity for that. Next slide, please. Uh, so how does an issue get on the policy radar screen? Well, that's what Capitol Hill days have always been about. We have an organized, vocal, and active constituency, all of you, who educate your members of Congress about the issues your community is in, what you need from them, what's worked, what maybe hasn't worked, um, and then hopefully you continue to build these relationships over time. Um, this isn't a one-shot thing, and um, a lot of you on the phone I know have done a great job of that over the years. Next slide, please. Uh, so do we still go on buses? So I don't know that, Angelique, if you wanna explain that, I'm gonna let someone do it. We're not going to Capitol Hill. Um, it's all gonna be done virtually. Uh, Angelique, do you wanna- Yeah, absolutely. So um, we will not be having buses that will take people to Capitol Hill. We'll just have our shuttle that takes individuals to the Metro station. So um, instead, what we're doing is providing everyone with internet, something that has been um, in long demand. So everyone will have um, internet access throughout all of the Gaylord, but specifically in the meeting space, so that you can very easily hop on using your device to get to your Hill Day meetings. Yeah, thank you so much, Angelique. So yeah, we're not going to the Hill because these are virtual um, meetings but we're going to really have all of the bandwidth for you to be able to have everyone uh, do their meetings um, from their hotel room or wherever in the hotel or wherever they choose to, to do them. So, um, so all politics is local, which makes you as constituents extremely, extremely um, important. And um, obviously you have important information to provide um, I know there's a lot of questions coming in now that everyone's figuring out this is totally virtual about if youth are participating, do they need to bring their own laptops? So, uh, Sean, Chris, does someone want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that too. Um, okay. So, again, <laughs> you can use your mobile device, you can certainly bring your own um, laptops, but we will have a cyber cafe. There are limited um, laptops available there. So it's kind of a first come first serve. However, the Hill Day appointments are on a rolling basis. So you sh we, we anticipate that, you know, again, if you don't travel with it and you're not comfortable using your mobile device, you should be able to access it from one of the cyber cafe computers. Okay. And then one other question came up, Chris. So if they have nine youth, uh, all of those people should be um, signed up for Capitol Hill Day. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. There you go. So um, all politics is local. You're very important as constituents and you have incredibly important information to provide. We are the experts. You are the experts on substance use prevention in your communities, your states, and really in our nation. And so that makes you very unique and you have very, very important, interesting things to share. And because you know what's going on locally, you become a gigantic resource um, to your elected officials. Uh, next slide, please. So every single member of Congress can definitely help us. The more members that we have that care about what we're doing, that um, in the beginning of the appropriations process every year, put in our priorities for funding as their priorities, the more likely we are to get um, the money that we're trying to get appropriated and the policies we're trying to get passed done. Um, next slide, please. So why educating your members of Congress is especially important. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we've had amazing legislative successes even so far this year. And I wanna say the appropriations process for fiscal year 2022 isn't even over yet and <laughs> almost half the year. Is, is over, the, the fiscal year started in October. So they're still sort of trying to get the appropriations process finished, but we've had amazing success 
in no small part because of last year's forum and the great work that you guys did last year. So the drug-free communities program is up to $110 million in the House passed bill, which is 8 million above last year. Um, it would be the highest level the program was ever funded at. Again, Hill heard us, really important program. The Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, um, which allows past and current drug-free communities grantees to do more with more intensity around opioids and um, meth. That's up by $200,000 since last year. Next slide, please. Um, the Center for Substance Abuse Prevention is up big time. Uh, and I, for anyone who was waiting to be able to apply for a STOP Act grant, um, the House and the Senate both up the enhancement grant programs in the STOP Act for current and former drug-free communities grantees uh, to 11.5 million from 7 million. That is $4.5 million above last year. If we can get this level, that would mean there would be 92 new grants on top of the 132 existing grants, which is amazing. And again, this comes out of the great work that you've done educating members about how important this program is to you. And for those of you who wanted to get funding and have been waiting in line to get it, this is going to be the great year to do it if we can get this money appropriated in the final bill. And then the Strategic Prevention Framework Partnership for Success Program, um, they added about $30 million to that in, in the Senate side. So again, none of these numbers are really final yet, but we are working really hard and we need your help when you go to the Hill, given this won't be final to, to make the case for all of this. Uh, and then the Substance Abuse Prevention and Treatment Block Grant, of which there's a 20% set aside for prevention, um, that was upped um, by about $1.5 billion, which is amazing, which means that the 20% set aside would go up exponentially if we can get this to happen. Um, next slide, please. Um, so please thank your members of Congress for their past support. Uh, and um, you're gonna receive a state synopsis, which uh, Alex and Chris have worked really hard on all of them. Every state will have one which will tell you who your members are of your delegation, um, who supported the Drug Free Communities Program, the Care Enhancement Grant Program, uh, and, and other things. And so you'll, you'll know who to thank and what to thank them for. Uh, next slide, please. And right. um, now I'm gonna turn it over to Chris. All right, thanks, Sue. And again, thank you all for being here. Before I start going through my slides, I just want to say that the state synopsis which I'm about to talk about and then the Capitol Hill Day book clip, which we'll also, also talk about, are all going to be on the Capitol Hill Day platform that our uh, IT partners are building out for us. That'll be available the week of forum. And I think, and Khalid, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, in the days before forum as well, late next week. Um, so the state synopsis, as Sue mentioned, is an overview of who is in your congressional delegation in your state, uh, how they've supported CADCA and prevention in the past, or it might say that they haven't supported CADCA or prevention, and if, if that's the case, then bring up with them that they should support prevention. It'll have information on the number of DFC, STOP Act, and CARA grantees, and it'll, it'll talk about the committees that are of the greatest importance to CADCA, and if a member of Congress from your state serves on one of those committees, it'll uh, mention that as well. So this is a picture of the state synopsis for Alaska. Uh, Alaska only has one, one member of the House and two senators, so if you're in a larger state like California or Ohio or New York or Texas, you're going to have a lot more um, members of the House, but still only, only two senators, and uh, the synopsis will be a bit longer for you, but this is what Alaska's looks like. Uh, definitely be sure to thank your members of Congress who have supported CADCA, who have supported prevention, especially uh, those who signed on to the Drug-Free Communities Appropriations Support Letter to keep that program in, in ONDCP and fund it at the highest possible level. Uh, that letter is an annual thing and every year that's essential to us getting the highest possible funding for uh, DFC every year. Uh, make sure that in your Hill meetings, you are not only talking about your own successes, your own challenges in the community, but you're also highlighting the federal programs that fund your work, like DFC, CARA, the STOP Act, so on, um, because members of Congress really want to hear about 
um, what what is it that, that they can do that they have done as the federal government to, to support your work? Um, as Sue mentioned, fiscal year 2022, uh, the process is not over, even though the year began on October 1st. So this is a unique chance to weigh in for two fiscal years, uh, 2022 and 2023. This is a page from the previous version of the Hill book that lists the funding levels in fiscal year 21 for all of CADCA's priority programs and then um, requests that those programs be funded at the highest level. Uh, this says 2022, but the one that you'll have at Forum is gonna say 2022 and 2023. And again, the Hill book is gonna be on that Capitol Hill Day platform. Uh, this chart shows reductions in, uh, in substance use uh, prevention funding since fiscal year 2009. Um, it's been cut by almost 34% since fiscal year 09. And we all know as CADCA and you all know as coalition members and leaders that prevention works and that the field can't afford to be cut anymore. Um, the Hill book is also going to have several um, one pager from our federal partners. This is an example of what the uh, what NIDA gave us last year. And those those one pagers just further make the case for the, the federal programs that, that work for prevention and that we you know rely on, that we partner with to do our great work. Uh, this is another one pager from NIDA. And I'm gonna turn it back to Sue to go into more detail about the asks. Okay, so we, we do have asks, and I will say for those of you who um, want to just educate, um, if someone is in the room who can actually move to actually making the asks, that, that's great. If not, just saying, hey, highest possible levels would be fabulous, which I would say isn't particularly, um, it's not lobbying, but just anyway. We, we need all of the programs that fund our field, hopefully funded at the highest possible levels for both fiscal year 2022, which hopefully they'll be wrapping up. The, the continuing resolution that's keeping the government funded expires on um, February 18th, so after forum is over. So literally you'll be getting up there when people are really starting to finalize negotiations on final numbers for fiscal year 22, and then they're gonna start fiscal year 23. So I think the whole thing here is to just we got great numbers in the House and the Senate across the board in fiscal year 22. We just want to make sure at the end of the day, we keep the 110 million for DFC and the 1.5 billion extra for the block grant. And we're in great, great, great shape this year. It's like amazing how much money they've added to our field. And we'd like to make sure that that becomes a reality. For those of you who are drug-free communities grantees that have had trouble raising the match because of COVID, um, there is a Drug-Free Communities Pandemic Relief Act that has already passed the House, which we're very, very excited about, but it's somewhat stalled in the Senate. There's one Senator, Rand Paul from Kentucky, who put a hold on the bill, but we're working at CADCA, uh, working daily to try to get this passed into law so that because of COVID-related reasons, if you can't raise the match um, for your drug free communities program, this would allow ONDCP on a case by case basis to give you relief from the legal requirement for the dollar for dollar match. So um, if you have meetings on the Senate side, tell them how important it is that this bill um, be passed, especially if this has affected your coalition. Um, and, and so for the most part, we're just asking that all of the programs that fund our field be um, Oh, that one was the Drug-Free Communities Pandemic Relief Act. It's actually um, a freestanding bill. Most of our other asks have to do with just asking for the highest possible levels between the House and the Senate for all the programs that fund our field. And, and the last ask is really um, to support youth tobacco and marijuana uh, smoking and vaping prevention efforts because it's a, a really big deal. And um, to try to ban flavors, including menthol, um, because they're so attractive to kids and get so many kids hooked on, on vaping and smoking. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, you know, Chris, I'm gonna skip these because I think I've really already gone through most of, of this. Um, yeah, you did. Ready? So I don't really think we need to spend the time on this. Um, so I guess I just want to wrap my part of this up by saying 
I think all members of Congress need to really understand that we have to move the efforts upstream if we're ever going to get on top of the, the opioid fentanyl um, stimulant related crisis facing our nation. Um, and I'm going to say this on Capitol Hill Day when I speak, um, just like there was no way to solve the polio epidemic by only investing in more iron lungs. In fact, they moved upstream and found a vaccine. Um, we're never going to get on top of this if we're only dealing with this downstream, trying to help people who are already are presenting with issues. It's critically important that we do treatment and harm reduction and recovery support. But the less people that go down, you know, the, the line and get involved with this, the less people that actually need uh, treatment on the other end. So just like any other public health crisis, we need more money upstream in our continuum of care. And I think we need Congress to understand that. And please do use the iron lung uh, example if you'd like to. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. So how do you prepare for your meetings? First of all, you're going to set your agenda ahead of time. Um, next slide, please. And usually, I think any of you who have done these meetings before know, especially if you're meeting with a member, you need your elevator speech. You don't get a lot of time. If you're meeting with staff, you might get 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. So really having down exactly what you want to say and being brief is really important. Definitely share your expertise and your insights. You guys are the experts on substance use prevention in your communities. Uh, do highlight the important facts and outcomes of your work. And definitely always thank legislators for how they've helped us in the past and just for their taking the time to meet with you. Uh, we definitely don't want to overwhelm them with too much information and don't ever use jargons or acronyms. Like they will not know what the SPF is or um, a DFC. We need to like actually say all the words out loud so that they know exactly what we're talking about because they're not the experts in this, but we are. Uh, next slide, please. And here we go. I'm going to introduce Sean, who is our guru genius on um, how to do these Capitol Hill Day Zoom meetings. So take it away, Sean. Thanks so much. Um, so we're really staying right on theme here that um, Hill Day will really be all about preparation. And I think part of that lends to just being fully prepared for the Zoom platform. I think everyone's going to get this quite quickly after the work we've been doing the past couple of years. Of course, um, check in with your coalition members how they plan on accessing the Hill Day meetings, because um, chances are folks in your coalition will have one phone that has the capability to install that Zoom application. Or someone will be planning on bringing a laptop. And we just want to know who that is ahead of time. And that's going to help us have successful meetings on Hill Day itself. Before I dive too much deeper, I did want to just reiterate that we will be taking questions at the end. Of course, we're here in the chat box if you'd like to shoot a question out there. And um, we are more than willing to follow up this week, next week, we are here to support you through this. So please just let us know. Um, but that said, I'm gonna roll right through these slides and we're gonna get back to the, the main meat of the presentation. So um, again, plan to have that Zoom application um, fully installed on your phone or laptop. Um, we expect that to have a little bit more of a predictable response than just loading it up through the web browser. Um, you can visit the Zoom webpage, zoom.us, to install that. Um, please double check that email address that you have sent to um, Chris and Alex, that our public policy team. You, when applying to uh, arrange that meeting with uh, the members of Congress, uh, we submitted email addresses, and those email addresses are what we're going to use to identify you when you get on to Zoom, and that's how we're going to know that we have you in the right meeting. And so again, please just follow up by email um, if you'd like to update any of that. And Chris, you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, these two websites are really all you will need for um, working through Hill Day after that. Uh, you guys are probably very aware that we have the Capitol Hill scheduling online. You can check what, what's the status of that now. We're going to have it rolling on screens during in the forum itself, and you'll be able to check on your device immediately before accessing the meeting just to make sure you have the right time. 
Um, Chris, I, I know, is planning on being available to you all throughout forum to confirm these meetings with you, to talk with you, to answer any questions. He's right there at the main information booth. Is that? Uh, and Chris will correct me later if I've uh, got his location wrong. Um, then the second link here, we're going to preview in just one second. We have a platform set up. This should be very familiar to you if you've been able to join us for last year's mid-year, last year's forum. Um, it's really, we're going to get all of the meeting links to you for Capitol Hill Day through this platform. So this is a, a critical website for Capitol Hill Day. And Chris, if you move to the next slide, I believe we'll be able to show them what that looks like. As you type into that uh, website, you have that welcome page. It's a very simple sign on. We sign on and then you see the lobby of the Gaylord National. Right there in the center, you'll see it says Capitol Hill Day Appointments. And so when you click in there, you should see a map. Uh, Chris, if you can move on. A map of 10 regions of the United States of America. You'll just select your region. And from there, select whether you're joining a Senate meeting or your House meeting, right? So you'll click in really through this method, you'll click in twice, once for your Senate meeting and once for your reps. Chris, go ahead. If you see this dialog box, you might not. Um, it's It could say at this dialog box, so-and-so is inviting you to join a meeting with your senator or your congressperson in the House. And if you see it, just click join. You might not see it. It shouldn't matter either way. Chris, if you could advance one more time. Um, we are really going to be here to assist you. You should be uh, directed immediately into a breakout room. You might get that message asking you if you want to join the breakout room. But in the main session, outside of the breakout rooms on that Zoom call, there is a CADCA staff person in every single Zoom meeting waiting to help you, waiting to help you um, get into the correct meeting. So if anyone in your coalition is having a problem, just know that we're here. And so one of the ways to do it is, one of the ways to get in touch with us is to make sure that you're not in a breakout room, that you hit that leave breakout room button, which is in that bottom right hand corner where end meeting usually is in a Zoom call. And then you'll you'll be face to face with the CACA staffer who's there just to get you into the correct breakout room. A second way, which might be more intuitive for some of us, Chris, if you advance the slide, when down in the bottom menu, um, like you have in any Zoom meeting where you can turn your mic on and off, turn your video on and off, there's a button you'll see down there called breakout rooms. If you click on that, there will be an ask for help button. And what that will do is that'll start a chat directly with that CACA staffer on the phone call. So uh, please don't hesitate to contact us either way that is most helpful for you. You'll also have the ability to move yourself into a breakout room if you are comfortable with that. And that is through the uh, breakout room menu as well. And I believe that's my last slide and Chris is taking it from here. Uh, thanks, Sean. What I'm gonna go through is how do you get the most out of your Zoom meeting? Uh, we did something similar last year with the WebEx meetings, um, but you know, Zoom meetings is the new thing for this year. Uh, so it helps me to think of the Zoom meetings as another in-person meeting. Uh, I know some people might not be comfortable with you know being on a computer, being in front of a, a, a laptop camera, but it's just another in-person meeting uh, in, the, in that sense. Uh, so we're asking that just because of the sheer number of Zoom meetings that are going to be scheduled, that you don't share videos, that you don't share slides. Uh, if you do have things you want to share with your congressperson, get the email of the staffer and then email your content to them after the meeting. And just some basic Zoom etiquette. Uh, if you're not currently speaking, uh, please mute yourself so that those who are speaking can uh, be heard. And then definitely on Tuesday nights, state meetings, talk with other people in your coalition and in that meeting about who's going to say what, when, and just make sure you're prepared to, to make those asks and to have a great uh, meeting with your members of Congress. Uh, just more best practices, have one person be the primary spokesperson for your meeting. Uh, talk to your member of Congress about who is involved in your coalition, what they do, what issues they, what issues you address, uh, the federal funding that supports your work, and then talk about 
what your outcomes are, what your successes have been. If you have activities that you're particularly proud of, uh, highlight those um, in your meeting as well. And I'll turn it over to Alex to talk more about the Hill meetings. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, so Capitol Hill meetings. I know we've been answering a few questions in the chat box, but we're going to go over all the logistics now. Um, so, the opportunity to meet with your members. Chris and Sue kind of already covered, you know, what you could talk about in those meetings. Uh, we are still working on confirming your appointments. If you are interested in seeing which of your requested meetings has already been confirmed, that is the link. Um, just to clarify, we are still working on that. We are going to upload more meetings after COB today, so please just check that tomorrow. There will be more meetings there tomorrow. Um, if you submitted a request for a meeting and you don't see it listed, please do not worry. I promise you we are working on it. We have received your request. We are working very hard to get you those meetings, and we will get you those meetings. It just might take some time. Um, but if you still have questions about it and you just want to hear from us, make sure that we're working on it, please email us at publicpolicy at cadcat.org. We will get back to you, I promise. Um, meetings are listed by state on the platform and on the website. Uh, if you signed up for Capitol Hill Day, you were automatically put on your district meeting and your state two Senate meetings. Next slide, please. Best practices for Capitol Hill Day sign-ups. Just you know, leading us on to what we need from you guys. Uh, please do not sign up more than once for Capitol Hill Day. If you are worried that your request did not go through, again, please email us at publicpolicy at cadcad.org. We are working on it, I promise. Uh, please check your inboxes, including spam for emails from our automated service. Uh, if you have extra people to add to your original submission, please do not sign up again. Please email us at publicpolicy at cadcad.org. We will just add the people onto your reservation for you. Please be patient with our team. I promise we are working on it. It's just, you know, Congress has got a lot going on and we're just trying to get through to them and schedule these meetings on time for you. Uh, if after form a meeting with, with your representative or senator did not occur and you would like contact information for their offices, please reach out to us. We have provided the address. I've said it a few times, but it's in the slide and you'll get the slides afterwards. So you'll have the address emailed us at. We are here to help. So again, please reach out. Excuse me. Um, we will happily answer your emails. Just give us like one business day, just in case we have an influx of emails that day. We'll get back to you. I promise. Um, if someone in your state missed the deadline to sign up for Capitol Hill Day, please have them email us with their information. Um, the information is listed on the slide. We'll need the zip code, definitely a day of cell phone number. It's really important that we have the zip code and states so that we can find who your district representative is. Um, <clears throat> Next slide, excuse me, everybody. Okay, all members are important, but some are a bit more important than others. And here's why. If they are on an important committee to substance use prevention, specifically the Drug-Free Communities Program and the Car Enhancement Grant Programs, which are covered in the Financial Services and General Government Subcommittee, we will put these committee assignments on the state synopses that you will receive in your state meeting. Please take a little gander at those sheets. It will tell you <clears throat> which of your representatives are in these committee assignments. If they are, please make sure to mention our programs that are important to us and important to you. And you know, you'll, well, you'll get the information in that sheet, but here we go. So, um, <clears throat> okay, next slide, yeah. Encourage meeting participants to come to Capitol Hill Day events to find out more. Please attend our Capitol Hill Day webinar, I mean, plenary, gosh, plenary on Wednesday morning to learn about critical information impacting our field and hear from members of Congress. CADCA is public policy consultant who you have heard, of, heard, heard from earlier in this webinar, who thought will talk about the importance of Hill meetings and how to make sure they are effective. And please also attend the state meetings on Tuesday night um, to kind of strategize about your meetings and figure out who's gonna speak and what you're gonna say. Next slide. template for your Hill meeting pant out. Make your Capitol Hill Day meetings as effective as possible. We encourage you to create your own one pagers to showcase the names of your coalition members in all 12 sectors and to display your successes, outcomes visually from baseline to current to present to your congressional delegation during your meeting. Next slide. 
This is an example of what coalition sector representative diagram can look like. This is an example of outcomes. We will show a bunch of examples of outcomes. You will have access to these slides, so we're just kind of, you know, going to give you a second and then go to the next one. Although, okay, Alex, Alex, I just want to say one thing. We just told people that they wouldn't be able to share this kind of stuff this year on Zoom. So um, we will help you follow up if you have this kind of information. We will help you get it to your members and their staffs um, after the meetings. So I, it's very important to have this information. But as Chris said, it's going to be very difficult to start trying to share things um, on Zoom. So. Which, yeah, some, something definitely important to add to that is that um, I know last year a bunch of you were able to get the emails of the staffers that were in your meetings. Um, and even if you are with a member in the meeting, a staffer will also be present. They have to be. They're going to be taking notes. You can ask for their contact information. They're very willing to touch base with you after the meeting. If you, for some reason, forget or were unable to get that information, you can reach out to us at publicpolicy.cadcat.org and we will help you get that information. So yeah, just have your outcomes available, ready to go. You can kind of read off the information in the meeting um, if that's you know your goal that you strategize at the state meeting on Tuesday night. Um, and then you know if you don't have time for some reason, or you you know run out of time and you have extra materials you want to give them, that's when you email them or email us for their contact information so that you can email that information to them after the meeting. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you. Okay, youth at Capitol Hill meetings. Youth are extremely important. Um, cannot stress that enough. Hearing from the youth in your coalitions is probably one of the most important parts of the meeting. Uh, they have, it, you know, just hearing from the kids that are affected by these issues is really important for your Congress people. They like to hear from them. Um, give them the opportunity to speak, coach them a little bit beforehand if they get nervous or something. But yeah, it's just in general, we really encourage you to have your youth members speak. It's a great opportunity for them. And it's also a great opportunity to hear from the people that are most affected by this issue for the Congress people. So please, you know, have everyone participate if they'd like. Sue, so you're on mute. Sorry. And the meeting continued the relationship. So none of these meetings hopefully will be one shot deals. I think um, a lot of you know your members. Um, so you're building on existing relationships. But if this is a new member or if you've never met with them before, um, it's just your first time doing a forum Capitol Hill Day, um, realize that you are a resource and that you have things to share. So um, definitely after the meeting, follow up with your outcomes, with the chart that shows the names of the sector reps in your coalition, send them uh, any other short information. These people love one pagers um, that you have articles, um, invite them to do a town hall meeting, um, just build on the relationship and make it a win-win. Um, they're always looking for ways to be visible in their districts and their states. And if you have great opportunities for them, to um, to show up and speak to large groups of people on a topic, um, or if you have new data that comes out um, that you think they'd be interested in, please do send it. And, and also always, always, always follow up with a thank you email um, to everyone you met with reiterating the points that, um, that you've made. So become an ongoing source of information and data for your members and their staffs. And um, all of these members have people who are called district staff. They're staff who work for the senators and the Congress people in your communities at the district level. And um, those are great people to get involved in your coalition locally. They love it because they can go to one meeting and talk to all 12 sectors. Very hard for them to get that much um, you know, visibility in the community with that many people just by attending one meeting. So if you don't have your district staff people for your members involved, invite them. Um, they're not in Washington. They actually are in the home states and districts. So again, or for yourself as a continuing local resource, um, ask if they want you to connect with their local district staff, or if you think it's important, ask for the contact and say you'd love to invite them to your coalition meetings. 
do ask if your member's interested in working with you on some sort of a town hall meeting on opioids, uh, fentanyl, stimulants, vaping. There, there's so many topics at this point. Um, and please mention that CATCA represents your coalition in Washington so that when we follow up later in the appropriations and the authorizing process to try to work with them to get what we need for you and the whole field done, they know that we're connected to you. This goes back to all politics is local. There are constituents who vote for them and that, um, that you're tied to us. Um, next slide, please. So definitely send a thank you note to everyone you met with that um, thanks them and reiterates your asks. Again, as Alex said, um, hopefully you will have all the right email addresses to uh, be able to do that. And, um, and then yes, provide follow-up information. Be sure to get the office contact information from the members. A lot of this is we're repeating it, but it, it bears repeating because it's really important. And if you discussed outcomes, data, and other materials, you can send those to your members and their staff after the meetings because we're asking you not to try to do it on Zoom with a whole bunch of other people on the same call. Um, next slide, please. Okie dokie, go ahead, Chris. All right, so this has been uh, talked about before, but if you have filled out the Capitol Hill Day registration form, which hopefully everyone on this call has done, uh, and you wanna see if your meeting's been scheduled, you can go to catca.org slash Capitol Hill Scheduling, that's capital with an O, to see the list of uh, appointments that have been uh, confirmed so far. Uh, that list is constantly being updated and we're always adding new appointments. So uh, like right now, I think the, the first state on there is Montana. We are uh, scheduling appointments and publishing for other states that are earlier in the alphabet than Montana as well, and it'll all be on there. Um, if you submitted a request, you don't see it yet. Um, again, Alex and I are working on it, and, uh, and we thank you for your patience as we work to confirm these uh, meetings. Um, I should also say, just before I move on from this slide, 99.99% of all of the meetings for Capitol Hill Day this year are going to be on Zoom. Uh, however, in just a small handful of cases, uh, like for example, Wyoming, uh, Representative Liz Cheney reached out to me and she wants to do a conference call using a uh, conference call line. So if, that is, if that's the case for you, you'll hear from Alex and me directly with information about that. But again, 99.9% .9 of all the Hill meetings are gonna be via the Zoom that, that Sean uh, went through earlier in the presentation. We also encourage you to download the CADCA forum app. It has the link to that list of congressional appointments and also great information on the other sessions of forum and just how to get the most out of the whole week long experience. Uh, know before you go, each attendee is going to have three meetings with uh, their two US senators and their one member of the House. Uh, we encourage you to, again, after the meeting, send the congressional staff your own data, your own outcomes. And again, the, the state synopsis and the Capitol Hill Day booklet are going to be available on that uh, Capitol Hill Day platform that Sean went through uh, earlier. Uh, we also encourage you to come to the legislative plenary on the Wednesday morning, February 2nd. It's going to have a congressional panel uh, where they're going to talk about their priorities for prevention in this next session of Congress. We're going to hear a uh, speech from Sue and then also uh, remarks from some of our Senate champions, our award-winning Congress members, and then our advocates of the year to get you all ready to go have these wonderful virtual meetings. And back over to you, Sue, for a conclusion. So concluding thoughts, Capitol Hill Day is really a unique opportunity for every one of you to make a difference by educating your members. Uh, you can really help translate your local successes into national successes. And um, your members of Congress need to hear from you on Capitol Hill Day and throughout the entire year, not one shot things. And um, I know that there, our questions that came up and, and I we have some time. So I'm wondering, um, Sean, Chris, and Alex, on stuff that came up, like about does everyone have to have, you know, their own computer or laptop? Can we go back through 
the answers verbally to some of what you answered in the chat so that everybody can have the benefit of hearing the answers to those questions. Yes. I think a lot and of all have the same questions. Yes. And also there are a few that might be geared towards Angelique as well. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, so first off, again, as Chris said, in case you joined in the last like five minutes, all, all the meetings will be virtual through Zoom. There are just a tiny handful of meetings that will be conference calls instead, and we will contact you directly with that information in the next coming week and a half or so. Um, please be patient with us. We are working on all of the meetings, all of them, for every state. So just hang on there. We will get it done. Um, it will be available on our website. We have the link to that in this PowerPoint, which you will be sent. And you will also be sent the recording. Um, that just covers the first gist of things. Chris, you got things to add? Uh, no, Alex, I think you covered it. I'm just going to the chat and, and seeing uh, some of these questions and we'll, we'll answer them. I will say, um, Chris and Alex and Sue, um, there's a question that came up a few times, which is, can other members of your community or coalition who are not registered and are not attending forum participate in the virtual Hill appointments? And again, unfortunately, the answer is no. Participation in Hill Day activities at forum is, is really um, restricted to individuals who are registered to attend forum. While Chris and Alex are looking at the questions that are in the chat, um, as new questions are coming in, um, Sue mentioned one as an example, which is, um, I believe it was Kelly asked, um, how many people, uh, is it everyone in the coalition needs to be on one single device to access the meeting? And that that is not the case. Um, we are using the emails that, um, are associated with the session on our side. Chris, could you mute for one second? Um, we are using the email addresses that you registered for Capitol Hill Day um, through the platform. All of those will be associated with that breakout room. So one device for every single one of those emails can log on to the meeting and we'll have a successful connection. Um, if you have additional members, um, people are going to forum and decide maybe Monday that they'd like to join Capitol Hill Day. They're welcome to join the Hill Day meetings, of course, as well. Um, what they will experience is as they use that um, platform, the, the conference platform, they click through the region, they click through the state, they click the Senate or their house meeting, as we showed you before, and then they'll just be in the main session in that Zoom room. And so they'll talk with the CACA staff member and get placed in the correct breakout room. Hey, everybody, a few questions I'm seeing. Uh, first off, if you have any questions about your Hill Day reservations and or just want to chat and make sure we got your reservation, please contact us at publicpolicy at cadcat.org. I just put in that chat, put that in the chat at 3.53 p.m. So hopefully you'll be able to find it. Uh, the name of the app that you need to have is the CADCA app. It's just called CADCA. If you just go into the app store on your iPhone, or I think on Google Play, it's the same thing too. Chris can correct me if I'm wrong there. But if you go in the app store and you literally just type in CADCA, all caps, it comes up, I promise. Um, it looks, it's our little logo. You can't miss it. It's great. Um, easy to download. Please do. Please do it before the forum. We got, we work on all those little notifications for you. We're very informative and we need you to have those. So, you know, just please do it. Thanks. Alex, can I just answer one question? Someone asked, does your coalition get to go to all these meetings itself? So if you are a coalition in a congressional district where you're the only, um, coalition or person, you know, group in that district having a meeting with that representative, yes, then you might be able to go by yourself. This is again, not a CATCA thing. This is a Capitol Hill thing. They um, have enough time in the day to meet with people from each national group in one meeting. They would kill us if we set up with the senators 10 different meetings for 10 different coalitions um on the same basic subject from the same conference they'd never work with us again so we we learned the hard way that for the senate meetings especially they really do want to have one meeting with everybody from their state 
which is why the state meetings are so important to get organized and figure out who's saying what. And even in the congressional district ones, if you're in a congressional district where there's another coalition that's attending, um, then you're going to, yes, need to do the meeting together because that is what is demanded by the, uh, the people who schedule these meetings on Capitol Hill. So again, CADCA has no control over this. Um, this is just how the Hill works. And I will add, um, the state meeting is where you will be able to figure out who will be in your meeting. That's very important, you know, just make sure you mention, you know, who your representative is, and then hopefully anybody that's going to be in that district meeting with you will let you know. Everyone in your state meeting will have the opportunity to be in your Senate meeting. So that clears that up. Um, the Capitol Hill Day schedule, where will it be on the app? Kali, you wanna step in on that one? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. So all Capitol Hill Day information is under general info um, on the app. So once you download the app, you're going to want to go to upcoming events and you'll see the 2022 National Leadership Forum. And it might take a second, but it's going to upload all the good information there. And then um, throughout all of the different icons, you will see one for general information. One of the selected highlighted information is Capitol Hill Day. And again, it will have the link that um, everyone has been talking about on this webinar that can take you to the scheduled congressional appointments. And again, the app, like our um, other information, is updated on a daily basis. So any new appointments will show up there as well. Any other questions? We'll give it a minute. While we're doing that, I will just go over the last key points. We will, we are recording this. We will send you the recording. We will also send you the slides to the presentation that you saw us do a few minutes ago. Do you have any further questions that we did not answer your question or do we not, or we missed it and didn't get to it? Please email us at publicpolicy at CADCA.org if it is related to Capitol Hill Day. If it's related to events, please send it to events at CADCA.org. We will all get to you in a timely manner as much as we can. Um, Please be patient with us. We are scheduling all of your meetings, we promise. Working very hard at that. We will notify you when they are scheduled. Um, but also, you know, you can check the link that's in the slides and in the chat, um, cadca.org slash backslash Capitol Hill Day scheduling, Capitol Hill scheduling. Chris, can you? That's, yeah, it's, it's uh, cadca.org slash Capitol Hill scheduling. Uh, a question that one person has is, do we know if we're going to be able to speak with the actual legislators or their aides? Uh, that depends on the legislator. Um, they're quite busy with votes and committee meetings and things. Uh, a lot of them, if they can make it, they'll they'll pop in and they'll they'll say hello. Um, if they can't make it, it'll be the meeting will be taken by an aide. Uh, and that's actually great because the aides are the ones that really get into the weeds on the on the issues and are able to you know really help um move the needle on some of these things so meeting with an aide is just as good if not better than meeting with the congressperson themselves yeah the aides are the trusted members that tell the member of congress you know what's going on and what he he or she needs to know so they're just as important um and again they have committee hearings and votes on the day of we know already that they will have committee hearings on the day of so they will do their best to be in the meetings, the members will, but if they are not, you will have a staff member from the office in the meeting. Um, and, you know, they will they will take the notes and send it on to the member. Um, and, you and, know, if the Congress, oh, sorry, you go. No, no, we, we saw last year a, a tremendous amount of the members, like Senator Grassley himself was involved. Uh, th these guys know their constituents, they actually really care. And if there's any way that they can possibly show up to say hello and to, to listen to what you have to say, they're going to try to do it. Um, but again, don't be slighted. For the most part, I work 99% with the AIDS and look what we've been able to accomplish. Um, it's great if you can, you know, meet with the member and I'm 
telling you they will make every effort to try to make that happen. But again, we can't control that either. That all has to do with their schedule that afternoon um, and they're gonna do the best they can to be there. Yeah, and I will say that last year, at least, uh, I feel like we might've had more participation from the members themselves than in previous years. It just makes it easier for them to do it from wherever they are in the Capitol. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed that we get a good percentage, but again, the, le the legislative aides that will be in the meetings are just as important as, you know, maybe even more important. So they will be helpful and they will pass on your notes. Okay, it's been like 10 minutes since we ended officially and I don't see many more questions going in. So again, just please email us at publicpolicy at caghead.org if you have any further questions, we will get back to you as soon as possible. And thank you so much for attending the Capitol Hill Day webinar. We really appreciate it. Thanks everybody.